This facility, this last year has been an incredible blessing to me. As you all know, it's been a, you know, a, a challenging time. And, and I would walk by here fairly regularly because this is the future and it gave me hope. Um, so thank you for coming to celebrate that with us. Um, we have uh, a couple people that, that I'd like to acknowledge uh, and thank. Uh, the first is uh, President Dr. Paul Ferguson. Thank you for your support with the health sciences. Board Chair David Poole, you and the Board of Trustees have been constantly encouraging, just took a great interest in, in the PT program, so we really thank you for that. Um, and then uh, Dr. Stanton has been there every step of the way, going back at least eight years behind the scenes. So this, this is a, a quite a monumental effort. Uh, so thank you, uh, Mark, for the, all your support. Uh, and Don Davis, uh, your team was amazing uh, this year. And this was actually, I think, an easy project. I don't know if you felt that way, uh, but everything is far better than I had ever imagined it to be. Uh, and then um, uh, Corbin and Dave Bixby, thank you for, for helping us uh, with the gift and to uh, just frame this vision for us. And so we really appreciate the work that you've done. Uh, I'd also like to thank the physical therapy department who are, they're standing up there looming uh, <laughs> up there. So you are an incredible blessing to me. Uh, over the last seven years, we've had uh, many, many, many discussions uh, and, and dreamed of a facility that would match the excellence of your program. You, you need to understand this is the best department in the U.S. I'm convinced of that. Uh, and then finally, I'd like to thank the Sacred Harvest Foundation uh, for catching the vision of, of having the best students taught by the best faculty in the best facility. And we truly have that. This facility allows us to be a model for rehabilitation science across the US and is a cornerstone of academic excellence. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Derek Sawecki, who is the program director of the DPT program, and also, very conveniently, an architect as well. Thank you, it's my job to share with you a little bit about how this space came to be. So the space began about seven years ago with just a thought that we need to grow. We need to grow bigger and better. We need to have facilities that will be uh, comparable to the program that we have. And I came on about four years ago. And so one of my first jobs was to help facilitate this transition in this, uh, this fabulous building that we have. The, the process began with a, just a, a blueprint. They handed me a blueprint on my first day and said, take a look at this. And I looked at it and it was really just an office space. There were classrooms and little larger classrooms to do things. And I thought, you know, is this really about what educating a physical therapist is about? Physical therapists are a different type of people. I was talking to Mark as we were coming in and he's saying a physical therapist is a the type of person who after a total knee surgery will come in and they'll smile at you and they're causing you pain, right? <laughs> And so for us, we needed a, a space that would be able to build on these types of relationships that we have because physical therapy is about relationships. It's a, it goes beyond classrooms. It goes to the relationships that you build. The problem was the, the warehouse that they gave us was just enough to accommodate just education. So what we had to do is go back and redesign. And luckily we had a, a dean that was had our back and said, go ahead and push this forward because it was a challenge. What we needed to do was ask for a third of more space. We had to ask for $4 million more funding in order to afford this. And so what happened is that we were granted the ability. We had a generous donation that helped facilitate this as well. And so everything on that side of the wall was a loading dock before 
And that is the stuff that has given us the ability to build a space that puts priority on relationships, community, the friends you make on the journey. I was telling uh, earlier the Board of Trustees that part of what we do is helping people, but it's not just about the degree, it's about the journey that you take as well. And so to facilitate this journey, we wanted a space that's two stories, that can bring people together, that can have people sitting on stairs like Plato had people sitting on stairs, and we can sit and educate, and we can teach people about relationships, we can teach people about physical therapy, how the body works, how we move, how we get people better, and we can change not only our fellow students, we can change faculty, we can change the university, and we can go out and change the world through these relationships. And that comes through a space. Space is more than just the walls. Physical architecture is more than just the walls. It's the space inside that makes us and makes the program. And so now we have a space that when people come in, they say, oh, this is an area, this is a place where I can learn. This is a place where I could build relationships. This is a place where we can go out and change the world. And so part of what we, our design you'll see as you walk through is based off creating these areas where people can hang out. And part of the design you'll see is about uh, placing a priority on technology. The university has given us a, the ability to make this a showcase for what's possible in the future, a showcase on how we need to educate future generations. Because when you design a building, I always had to tell the faculty, it's not about designing what you want today. It's about looking 10, 15, 20 years down the line and seeing what we need to do to develop a program for the future as well. So this facility is designed with the latest technology, but also giving us the flexibility and ability to expand beyond that into new places with technology as well. So the two primary goals was community, relationships, as well as t the use of technology for the future generation. So we welcome you to our home. We well, thank you for everybody who had a chance to and put a, a part into it. I thank my faculty for bearing with me as I, I try to get through this process with you guys. And we welcome you to our house and we're thankful you're here. Well, thank you, and good afternoon. Welcome to this wonderful moment. It's just my privilege to just to say thank you, Steve, and Sacred Harvest Foundation for your role in helping us to achieve this wonderful facility. You've heard me talk a lot about Christ-centered academic excellence as how Azusa Pacific University is going to be known. And we talk about who we are as Christians and who we are as academicians and how those two come together. And the board has had a wonderful discussion this week about what excellence means, what it looks like. How do you define it? How do you know you have good faculty? How do you know you have good students? This is a beautiful model about Christ-centered academic excellence. And the only way that happens is by a partnership and a coming together. Good faculty, great faculty, great students who had the pleasure to get to know many of them last week, incredibly gifted in physical therapy, committed, just got back from a mission trip to Africa, incredible staff to support this, a facility that is unparalleled, and partners in the dean, the provost, the president, the board of trustees, and wonderful donors. You don't achieve academic excellence without that partnership. You don't achieve academic excellence if not everybody's working together to provide the quality that not only is academically based, but funding based, and really Christ-centered and encouraging each other to be better. So I'm so proud, Bob, congratulations. I know this is a good day for you. Steve, as Steve, uh, we were walking in and I, I just said, it must be a joyous day for you just to see some of the fruition of your generosity. And he said, I had a friend one day say, this is how you leverage excellence. And Steve says, no, it's really how you leverage excellence. I'm not gonna forget that. So thank you for your uh, just continuing generosity. We're so grateful for the team, and let's not forget that, that Christ-centered academic excellence really results from us all working together to God be the glory. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. My name is Parker, and I'm a third-year DPT student here, as well as uh, an alumni already. I came here for undergrad, so it's been quite an honor and a journey to be 
almost a decade later and still here <laughs> and loving it, loving every minute. Um, I have the honor to thank you and to pray with you guys today as we dedicate this building to the Lord and our joint mission with him. So if you would pray with me. Father, we just thank you so much. We come to you with gratitude that you are the great healer. That is your title, but you welcome us to join you in that. And we're so honored to partner with you. And we just ask that you would take this space and anoint it with your presence. Develop healers, develop healing in the students that come through here, the faculty that partner with us and the difference makers that go forth from these halls. We just ask that you would guard this space for your glory and that um, on the other side of it all, it all points to you. Thank you so much, amen. <laughs>